Elephants are the biggest land animals in the world, although today they are only found in Africa and Southern Asia. Not too long ago they inhabited nearly every continent on earth. Their fascinating evolutionary history stretches back to the time of the dinosaurs. And in this video, we'll go on a journey from their surprising ancestors to the modern elephants we see today. Starting 100 million years ago with the emergence of Afrotheria, one of the six major clades of mammals that first appeared shortly after Africa split away from South America. This group contains many familiar animals associated with Africa. From within Afrotheria, the branch Proboscidea emerged. This is the order containing the elephants and their extinct relatives. The earliest Proboscidea known to the fossil record dates back 60 million years ago from modern day Morocco. At just 20 centimeters tall, Erytherium looked nothing like the elephants we know today. Erytherium evolved during the radiation of mammals after the KT extinction event that killed off the non-avian dinosaurs. And although very few fossils of Erytherium have been found, we have found enough to confirm that it was a Proboscidean, and thus the oldest elephant ancestor we know of. The following step in the evolution of elephants was Moetherium, an animal that lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle in Egypt's swamps around 37 million years ago. Although resembling a hippo more than elephants, its short tusks and longer snout, reminiscent of a tapir, hint at its placement on the tree of life. From here, the Proboscideans fall into two clades, the Elephantiforms, containing more familiar species like elephants and mammoths, and the Plesiophantiforms, which is made up of a much stranger assortment of animals. The earliest living family of Plesiophantiforms were the Numidotheriidae. Numidotheriidae may not be a household name, but this early family of aquatic adapted mammals marks a key evolutionary shift in these species towards a semi-aquatic lifestyle. But we really start to see similarities with elephants with the appearance of the Bathyotheriidae. 37 million years ago in the late Eocene. These animals were among the largest to walk the earth at the time, at 2 meters and 2 tons. Bathyerids were the first Proboscideans to leave the African continent, with the genus Omanotherium making it all the way to Oman. Dispersal of these animals out of the African continent would only increase as a land bridge between Eurasia and Africa began to form, which would ultimately lead to a radiation resulting in some very strange species. Up to this point, you probably wouldn't have guessed that these animals are relatives of the elephant. But if you were to encounter a dinothere, you would probably identify it as an elephant, although they were actually far from being a close relative of elephants. This family can be split into two clades, Chilgotherianae and Dinotheriidae. Chilgotherium's remains have been found in Ethiopia, dating to 27 million years ago, although we know fairly little about it because so far only teeth have been found. Although these teeth are different enough to distinguish it, Chilgotherium was a large animal at 2 meters and 1.5 tons, but not compared to the huge 4 meter, 12 ton Dinotherium. Taller than the African elephant, Dinotheres were very successful, and although this family had originated in Africa, it had managed to spread all the way from Austria to Thailand. Although being successful at the time, Plesiophantiforms eventually died out, leaving just the Elephantiforms. Over time, these Elephantiforms would grow more and more distinct. Take Paleomastodon. This 2.5 ton titan had four tusks and likely spent much of its time wading through ancient waterways. These additional tusks were used as shovels to pull up underwater plant matter as Paleomastodon lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle. Similar to Paleomastodon was Pheomia, a close relative that was mostly distinguished by having more curved tusks, a trend that would only become more common with later species like Amabelodonts. Paleomastodon and Pheomia have one clear difference from modern elephants. They lack horizontal tooth displacement. But when excavating remains in Eritrea, the missing link between these groups was found. A species known as Eritreum, which lived 27 million years ago. Only one ton in weight, it was smaller than its descendants. But it did have horizontal tooth displacement, a characteristic that all following groups of elephantiforms had. From here, these animals are classified under the clade Elephantomorpha, which includes the earliest branch containing the mastodons. Mastodons are often mistaken for mammoths, but they were a distinct group. Their skulls were flatter, and they had shorter, straighter tusks. Unlike their mammoth cousins, which grazed on grass in open plains, mastodons were forest dwellers, primarily feeding on leaves and twigs. The mastodons first evolved around 28 million years ago, with one of the earlier species being Losodocodon from Kenya. Following them was Zygolophodon, another mastodon from Kenya, that possibly became the first mastodon to leave Africa around 19 million years ago, eventually reaching North America. In North America, 
the genus Mammut evolved, with the American Mastodon becoming one of the most iconic Proboticeans. The American Mastodon, which could grow to the size of an African elephant, roamed the forests of North America as recently as 11,000 years ago. Much like other megafauna of the Americas, they disappeared at the end of the last ice age. Whilst many species of megafauna succumbed to the rising temperatures, there's solid evidence suggesting that human hunting played a major role in driving the Mastodon to extinction. And while the Mastodons were successful for millions of years, one other group of elephantomorphs never even made it to the Ice Age. And Belodonts, with their shovel-like tusks, must have been a bizarre yet intriguing sight. First evolving 16 million years ago in Africa, although they soon left the continent, they used their tusks to scrape bark from trees, possibly to eat the bark or reach twigs and leaves. A different use than earlier species with shovel-like tusks, which use them as spoons to scoop up underwater plant matter. One thing we don't know about them for sure is what their trunks looked like. We don't really know if they had trunks like modern elephants or whether they were much shorter and wider. These ambelodonts, managed to thrive across much of the world, but the last ended up dying out around 5 million years ago, around the same time as many other large animals at the end of the Miocene. A group that persisted until recent times were the Gompatheres, a hugely successful family that was very closely related to the Ambelodontids, first emerging 30 million years ago in Arabia. One of the most known genuses of Gompatheres was Gompatherium. This genus had four tusks, with a lower two sitting on the tip of its jaw, just like the Ambelodonts. They also had flat skulls, but where they differed from Ambelodonts was in what they ate. Whilst Ambelodonts largely ate bark and leaves, Gompatheres ate aquatic plant matter. Gompatheres reached further than any other Proboticean, being the only group to reach South America. These South American Gompatheres switched from being aquatic to a grazing lifestyle. As the densely forested and swampy lands of the Darien Gap would have been a barrier to these mammoths, whilst Gompatheres were perfectly adapted to the swamps, allowing them to cross over. These animals disappeared at the end of the last ice age as a result of both human hunting and climate change. You know how I said they were a family? Well, this isn't really true, as they were a paraphyletic group from which the Elephantoids branched out from, a group known for their abnormally large tusks. Anakas had possibly the largest tusk to body ratio, with tusks that almost reached 4 meters long. This trend of huge tusks was followed by Stegodon, a genus found as far southeast as Timor, spreading to the Indonesian islands as it was a good swimmer. On these islands, they experienced island dwarfism. Of particular interest is the island of Flores. In the early Pleistocene, the island was inhabited by the tiny Stegodon Sondari, but eventually Stegodon Florensis came to replace it. But interestingly, it yet again shrunk in size. This all happened on the same island the Komodo dragon inhabits, and as the only large grazers at the time, they would have been the main prey source for the Komodo dragon. But out of all the Proboticean families to ever exist, only one remains today. This lineage branched off 20 million years ago and has come to form four main groups. The African elephant, the Asian elephants, mammoths, and Paleoloxodon, commonly referred to as the straight tusked elephants. Members of this genus are contenders for being the largest land mammals ever, although this is highly speculative. Of the many species that once existed, only three remain today, two of which were the African forest elephant and the African bush elephant. These are the largest land animals alive today. African elephants were of similar size to the Mammuthus genus. Elephants of the Mammuthus genus are what we call mammoths, perhaps the most iconic animals of the Ice Age, although they actually originated much earlier, around 5 million years ago, characterized by their long curved tusks and taller arms, and of course a thick coat of fur which helped them survive the Ice Age. These Ice Age giants actually originated in southern Africa, but it's when they ventured into Eurasia that they became extremely successful. First leaving the African continent 2.9 million years ago, from here they increased in size, with the steppe mammoth from 1.9 million years ago becoming the largest ever. Steppe mammoths are the ancestors of the woolly mammoth, as well as the Colombian mammoth, the two most well-known species of mammoth. Woolly mammoths were very widespread, from Ireland to North America, known for their brown fur that protected them. Due to their frigid habitat, many frozen woolly mammoth specimens are extremely well preserved. South of the glacial area in North America was slightly warmer, and led to the evolution of the Colombian mammoth. These mammoths were larger than their woolly cousins, standing around 13 feet tall. Instead of woolly fur, they had a more temperate climate adaptive coat, but still had hair. Most of these mammoths vanished at the end of the last ice age, but a few populations survived longer. The last mammoths clung onto Russia's Wrangel Island. Whilst the population was initially a thousand, the last of them died off around 2000 years ago, after the Egyptian pyramids had already been built. The only remaining elephant in Asia is the Asian elephant, which are actually more closely related to mammoths than they are to African elephants. And although Asian elephants once ranged all the way from Turkey to Borneo, now they have been expirated from much of their range. 
leading them to be classified as endangered, although they are faring better than the African forest elephant, which is critically endangered. Although habitat loss has resulted in a significant decline, as we all know, it is the trade for their ivory that has ended up making them endangered. Recently, it has even been revealed that they are often hunted for their meat. Most ivory is imported to China, even though the government said it would be completely banned in 2015. This is especially sad, as elephants are some of the most fascinating animals in the world, and are considered very intelligent, with the largest brain of any land animal. Elephants demonstrate complex behaviours, such as problem solving, empathy, self-awareness, and even mourning their dead. Studies have shown that elephants are capable of using tools, recognising themselves in mirrors, and understanding human gestures without training, and their ability to communicate over long distances using infrasound shows their advanced cognitive abilities. This intelligence, combined with their deep emotional bonds and near-perfect memory, makes them vulnerable to humans, as these good-natured creatures can easily be exploited. Though elephants have thrived across continents and survived ice ages, today they face a threat unlike any other, humans. But with efforts underway, Let's hope that these majestic creatures will roam the earth for generations to come. But some animals were not so lucky, and today all we have is their photos. So watch this video to see the last photos of nine extinct animals.